Tell me if this sounds familiar. You wake up with a headache, check your blood pressure, it's high. You panic, your neighbor says, Are your BP is high because you have hypertension. So now every time your head hurts, you think it's your blood pressure. But here's the twist. High blood pressure is called a silent killer for a reason. Most of the time, you can't feel it at all. So is that headache really due to high blood pressure? Namaste, I am Dr. Ameya Monkar and today we are going to bust one of the most common myths in cardiology. Can you really feel high blood pressure? We will cover why hypertension is usually symptomless, the real story about headaches and blood pressure, when symptoms do appear and why it's often late and finally how anxiety can trick your BP readings. So let's save you from unnecessary stress and maybe from popping BP pills every time your head hurts. Now here's the thing, high blood pressure is like a pressure cooker on a constant high flame. From the outside, it looks fine, but inside your pressure is building. If you keep it that way long enough, the safety valve, that is our organs, will take the hit. In fact, 85 to 90% of people with high BP have no symptoms at all. So you can be walking, working, watching an IPL match, completely fine and your BP could be 160 by 100. Why? Because your body gets used to that higher pressure over months or years. It adapts silently until damage starts building up in the background to your heart, brain, kidneys and eyes. Once a patient told me, doctor, I know when my BP is up. I can feel it in my ears and tummy. We checked, the BP was 118 by 76. He had acid reflux and the ears were innocent. Let's tackle the most common patient question. Doctor, my head is hurting. Is my BP high? The truth, most headaches are not caused by high BP. Migraines, tension headaches, dehydration, sinus problems, these are the most common causes. Now here's the tricky part. If you measure your BP during one of those headaches, you might see a high reading. Why? Because pain and stress, they trigger adrenaline, making your heart pump faster and your BP shoots up temporarily. So in most cases, the headache didn't come from the BP. The BP rose because of the headache. Now this is like blaming the fire alarm for the fire. It's just reacting, not causing the fire. So when is a headache truly from high BP? This usually happens when your BP is dangerously high, often more than 180 by 120 millimeters of mercury, and it's not a momentary spike. Now we are talking of hypertensive urgency or emergency, often when other signs like blurred vision, nausea or vomiting, confusion, weakness in the arms or legs, or difficulty speaking, so basically stroke-like features or there is chest discomfort and breathing difficulty. Now here's what's different about a BP-related headache. It's often at the back of the head, which we call as the occipital region, but it can also be generalized. It's usually dull, throbbing, pressure-like as if someone's slowly tightening a cloth band around your head, especially at the back. It's usually worse in the morning. It could be because of an overnight BP rise or could be persistent throughout the day. So what to do if you have a headache? First, stay calm. Stress will only push your BP higher. Second, sit quietly for five to 10 minutes, hydrate and relax your shoulders. Third, if you have a home BP monitor, measure your BP correctly. That is arm supported at the heart level, no talking and correct cuff size. Fourth, if your reading is mildly high, say 140 to 160 systolic, but you have no other worrying symptoms, Take a painkiller, something like a paracetamol or naproxen works. Don't panic, recheck after 30 to 60 minutes once the pain is better. But you need to go to the hospital immediately if BP is more than 180 by 120 with symptoms like weakness, chest discomfort, severe shortness of breath, vision changes or slurred speech. If you have a sudden severe headache, like it's the worst headache of your life with nausea, vomiting and confusion, please don't ignore it. It's best to rule out a brain bleed. Now here's the scary part. By the time high BP does cause symptoms, the damage is usually already done. It's like ignoring a small drip in your ceiling. For months, it's silent. And then one day, water floods into your living room. High BP works the same way. It silently stresses your organs until something gives away. Now when BP damages the small vessels in your brain, they can burst causing a bleed or a clot, which we call a stroke. Symptoms come suddenly, uh, weakness on a side, slurred speech, a facial droop, loss of vision, 
And here's the thing, stroke risk doubles with every 20 millimeters increase in systolic BP above normal. In India, strokes are hitting younger people too. I've seen IT professionals in their 40s with disabling strokes, all because they thought I'm too young for BP. A study from Hyderabad showed that 2 to 3 out of every 10 stroke patients are young professionals. Next is the heart. Your heart pumps against this constant high pressure like a man cycling uphill every single day. Now, over time, the heart muscles thicken, heart stiffens and weakens. Now, this can cause breathlessness from heart failure and increases the risk of heart attacks. Now, I had a patient who could climb three flights of stairs easily until one day he struggled to walk from the bedroom to the bathroom. His BP had been high for years and the heart finally said enough. Next, blood pressure damages your kidneys, increasing the risk of dialysis in the future. India already has a very high burden of chronic kidney disease and hypertension is one of the top causes. High BP also damages the retina, that's the light sensitive layer in your eyes causing blurring, dark spots or sudden vision loss. Now this is called hypertensive retinopathy. We will discuss regarding this end organ damage and how to identify this in our next video. So by the time you feel high BP, it's not just high, it's harming. And that's why waiting for symptoms before checking or treating your BP is like waiting for your ceiling to collapse before calling the plumber. Now let's talk about a story I hear often. You feel symptoms, pounding heartbeat, tight chest, lightheadedness. You check your BP, it's high, 155 by 95. Now is this hypertension or is it anxiety or two plates of samosa and three missed deadlines? See, when we are stressed or panicked, our body releases adrenaline, a natural fight or flight hormone. Now this spikes BP temporarily it's not disease, it's survival mode. Another common story, you check your BP at home, it says 150-90. You think, oh no, something's wrong here. So you check it again. Now it's 160 by 100. You panic even more, maybe call your spouse or maybe Google stroke symptoms. And guess what? The next reading, it's 170 by 105. Now this is the BP anxiety loop. The more you stress, the higher it climbs. So here's my advice if you see a high reading at home. Sit quietly for five minutes, Take a deep breath and repeat only after you have calmed down. Avoid checking more than twice in a row. See, repeated measurements in panic are like stoking a fire. Track readings morning and evening for at least one to two weeks before worrying. And if you are unsure or if the numbers are consistently high, bring your log to the doctor. Please don't self-diagnose or self-medicate. Before we wrap up, let's tackle some of the most common and sometimes funniest questions that I get from my patients about blood pressure. First, doctor, I can feel when my BP is high. Ah, if only our bodies came with a built-in BP alarm. The truth is, you can often feel low BP. You may feel dizziness, fainting or fatigue because the brain isn't getting enough blood. But high BP is sneaky. It rarely causes symptoms until it's already causing damage. And that's why it's called the silent killer. Second, can I just sleep off high BP? Now see, sometimes rest or a nap can bring down mildly elevated blood pressure. But that doesn't mean the underlying problem has vanished. It's like muting the TV for a while, the movie is still playing in the background. So if your baseline BP was high before, it will likely climb again if you don't treat the cause. So home BP monitoring to know your average blood pressure is essential. Third, isn't it better to feel my BP so I know when to take my medicine? No, a big no. By the time you feel high BP, maybe with a severe headache, blurred vision or breathlessness, you could already be at the stage of organ damage. We don't want you to wait for symptoms, we want you to prevent them, right? Now let me give you some Indian statistics. Now, one in three Indian adults has high blood pressure, half don't know about it and of those who know it, only half take medications regularly. Think about it, that's like two thirds of people walking around with a bomb they don't know is sticking and even the ones who know sometimes forget to diffuse it. Bottom line, don't rely on your body to tell you your blood pressure. The cuff will do a much better job and it doesn't forget or get emotional about it. Measure it, log it, track it because when it comes to BP, prevention isn't just better than cure, it's the only way to avoid the cure in the first place. In our next video, we'll pull back the curtain on exactly how high BP silently damages your organs over time. What actually happens inside, how to catch it early and the test that could save you your life. 
If you found today's video helpful, hit the subscribe, share it with that friend who swears that they can feel their blood pressure and download our free Edgy Cardio Wise BP Tracker and Monitoring Guide. The link is waiting for you in the description. Goodbye and see you in the next one.